Look, whether you're a chef or a home cook, whatever. Making a good puree is a life skill and an art. And if you don't believe me, let me explain. So there's loads of different kinds of purees out there, right? All different recipes for different applications. Some are used to accompany meat, some are used to put into other recipes, you know, the list goes on and on. But they all sort of follow a general consensus. But I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff today. I'm gonna teach you something that a chef taught me, and yes, I'm talking about you, Christian, if you're watching, and that is the fundamentals of a good puree. Now when you're making a puree, the first thing that you need to do is pick a vegetable. Most vegetables are gonna make a great puree, but be careful with super starchy vegetables like potatoes or yucca. The starches can gelatinize and cause a gummy texture. I would recommend not playing with those just yet. Let's start with something like low to medium starch. Vegetables like, you know, winter squash, such as butternut squash, beets, cauliflower, and frozen peas. Super easy. I'll have a list in the description of other good vegetables for this. Next, you need a liquid to loosen the puree when blending so you can get a proper blend. You know, something like chicken stock, or, or really any stock for that matter. Water, milk, cream, you know, you, you get the idea. Lastly, and optionally, but you know, kind of recommended, is some sort of fat to emulsify into the puree while you're blending. You know, think oil or butter. Adding fat to a puree while blending will not only take it from smooth to rich velvet smooth, but it'll create a nicer mouthfeel as well as a nice, you know, cute little glossy look to it. And when people see a glossy puree, they lose their shit. Now let's talk about cooking it. Unless it's something like frozen peas, or in some cases you might not want to cook it as much, but in most cases, you essentially want to overcook whatever vegetable it is. Regardless of how you cook it, you want it to be cooked until super soft. Whether you're roasting it, sauteing it, boiling it, or steaming it, the softer it is, the smoother it'll be. Okay, so let's give a couple of examples. Butternut squash that I've just cut in half, you know, removed the seeds and all that jazz. Place it on a baking sheet fitted with a wire rack. Foil on the bottom of the sheet tray helps a lot. Then just spray with a little bit of nonstick cooking oil and roast it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes or until it's super soft. And then here's a cool way to get the skin off. So instead of trying to peel it off, you can actually just take the whole squash and take the cut side down and push it through a wire rack and that'll leave all that'll push all the nice flesh through and then leave the skin behind it's a it's a nice little technique you know now once you've got all of that you're gonna place it in a blender and you're gonna add just enough heavy cream to get it to start blending now once it starts continuously blending while tamping and getting nice and smooth and let that go for a little bit let it get super duper smooth and once it starts to get sort of warm and hot or ideally it should be hot then you're gonna drop in a couple of tablespoons of butter while the butter is still cold you want to make sure it's solid don't pour in melted butter Butter. This is the secret to adding butter to emulsify. You want to add it. This just ensures proper emulsification. And then that's it. You could just pour that into a bowl. It's a good idea to actually ice bath this down to have like one bowl with ice and then another bowl set on top of that ice and then pour your puree into that bowl that is set on top of the ice and then just stir it until it's cold. It'll only take a minute or two. This sort of ensures that it's gonna maintain the emulsification. It doesn't get grainy or stiff or separate or anything like that. Now let's try one out with cauliflower. So just cut off the florets and put them in a medium sized sauce pot. I added a couple of cloves garlic, you know, maybe some bay leaf, you know, whatever you're feeling. And then add enough milk and cream in equal parts, just enough to cover. You can also do this with chicken stock if you prefer. Once it's covered, set it on the stove, bring it up to a boil, and then reduce it down to a simmer, and then literally just simmer it until it's super duper soft. You can see how soft it is here. Then strain it out and reserve that liquid, place the solids in a blender, and then add however much liquid you need to blend it to the thickness that you want. Obviously, more liquid means you're gonna get a thinner, almost soupier, Texture, less liquid means you're gonna get a thicker, more stiff texture, so that's completely up to you. Once you've reached that consistency you want, then while it's blending, just stream in a couple of tablespoons of canola oil or any neutral tasting oil. And that's it, same situation. Cool it down, season it with salt or black pepper, whatever you want. This goes great with steak or a roast or any sort of meat dish. Now let's try and do a beet puree. I know that beets are not exactly everybody's favorite food, but this puree, to me, this changed my mind about beets. You don't have to peel them or anything, just wash them, then cover each beet individually with foil and place it on a sheet tray in the oven 
at about 400 degrees for anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half or until easily pierced with a fork. Then you should be able to just rub off the peel. If you can't rub it off, then you can just peel it off, but you should be able to rub it off with a towel or a paper towel or just your hands. I, I did it with my hands because I didn't want to ruin a towel. Then just chunk it up so it fits in your blender and blend it adding a couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar or any nice vinegar you might have that you want to add to it. Tablespoon or so of water. And then once that gets going in the blender, just let that thing rip and get nice and smooth. And a couple tablespoons of oil in there, stream them in while it's blending. So it's sort of similar to the cauliflower. You don't really need to add much liquid to this one because this has so much liquid in the actual vegetable. And that's something you gotta sort of learn as you do. Then just cool it down, season it with salt, black pepper, whatever you want. I think you're starting to notice a general consensus here. This is this is how the puree game works. And you can use this technique with literally any vegetable. Some really low starch vegetables are gonna be hard to keep super thick just because they don't have a ton of starch in them. So that's why I would probably revert back to the list that I have in the description. And that's it, that's the fundamentals of a puree. The only thing I wanna leave you with is just remember, before you make a puree, think about the application. That way you can decide what vegetable, how thick it should be, and how much oil you should add, all those good things. Now go out, buy yourself a vegetable, and make a puree, and then watch this B-roll. guys and that is it so purees restaurants already utilize them to their maximum possible benefit so it only seems fair for me to share what I've learned to you so you can apply it at home now you can have whether you want it to be fancy or not you can have an incredible meal by just adding a little bit of puree to something. Now to be honest, I'm really not sure how interested people are in this kind of content or this kind of information. I feel like I just had to put it out there. Just felt right. But anyway, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram or Twitter or any of those things. All the links are gonna be in the description below. And with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.